morning, all. Good morning. I've got privilege to be able to administer the oath of office to the new superintendent of the Massachusetts State Police, Jeff Noble. So would you raise your right hand and repeat after me? I. I. State your name. Jeffrey D. Noble. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. To the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And will support the Constitution thereof. And will support the Constitution thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I. I. Jeffrey D. Noble. Do solemnly swear and affirm. Do solemnly swear and affirm. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform. Discharge and perform all the duties incumbent on me. All the duties incumbent on me as superintendent of the Massachusetts State Police. As superintendent of the Massachusetts State Police. According to the best of my abilities and understanding. According to the best of my abilities and understanding. Agreeably. Agreeably. To the rules and regulations of the Constitution. To the rules and regulations of the Constitution. And the laws of this Commonwealth. In the laws of this Commonwealth. So help me God. So help me God. I, I, Jeffrey D. Noble, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will support the Constitution of the United States. I will support the Constitution of the United States. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Let's get this lined up. Testing one, two, three. Great. Well, good morning, everyone. And thank you, Colonel Noble, for your commitment to serve our state and our people as the new superintendent of the Massachusetts State Police. Thank you to your family for being here. We're joined by your wife, Sarah, your children, Jeff, Lauren, and Grady, your parents, George and Cynthia, and sisters, Sarah and Susan and their families. Good morning. The Lieutenant Governor and I are proud to stand here today joined by public safety leaders in our administration, Deputy Secretary for Public Safety and Security, Sue Terry, Under Secretary for Law Enforcement, Gina Kwan, members of the State Police Command Staff, Lieutenant Colonel Pinkham, Lieutenant Colonel Sear, Lieutenant Colonel Connors, Lieutenant Colonel Shoemaker. This is an important moment for Massachusetts because the state police are an essential organization and agency. Law enforcement is foundational to government, to our way of life. Public safety is what makes everything we do possible. We're grateful in Massachusetts to be one of the safest states in the entire country, including the state with the lowest rate of gun violence. It's a leading reason why we were recently ranked number one for quality of life and our ability to have a thriving and innovative economy. And it's thanks to many people, residents, legislators, district attorneys and their teams, all the parents, teachers, coaches, mentors, and so many more who create opportunity for young people. 
But I want to remind and underscore today that it's the men and women of law enforcement who work every day, every minute on the job to keep people safe. It's their skill and courage, their vigilance and dedication. It's their mission and their calling. And we are grateful. It's hard work. They make sacrifices. Their families make deep sacrifices. Last week, some of you joined us for the Massachusetts Law Enforcement Memorial Foundation annual event here at the State House. We read the names of the fallen, the names of troopers and officers who served through history here in Massachusetts and died in the line of duty. Then and now we pray for their families, including the family of Trooper Enrique Delgado Garcia and the law enforcement community he was devoted to. And we commit to ensuring that we are providing police with the tools, the training, the leadership, and the support they need to do their jobs and come home safely. Public safety is not an issue where we can ever say our work is done. I know this well as somebody who served as Attorney General for eight years and worked closely with the state police. We work continually to collaborate across agencies, lead in best practices, and build relationships of trust with our communities. We work especially with communities that suffer disproportionately from violence. And we work to get ahead of trends and threats which is why we created the hate crime unit in the MSP just last year when we saw identity-based threats and incidents on the rise. I want to express my deep and heartfelt gratitude to Colonel Jack Mon. Colonel Jack Mon answered the call nearly two years ago to step forward and serve. He did so with distinction, with steady leadership during this transition time. And I am grateful to Colonel Mon for his work and for continuing his work um, in this transition time with now Colonel Noble. We are committed to providing, I want you to know, we are committed to providing state-of-the-art, responsive, respectful, community-centered policing. And in Colonel Noble, we have a proven leader. He has dedicated his career to public service rising to the highest levels of the New Jersey State Police and delivering results on some of the most pressing issues of the day and that face law enforcement. He is a principled, respected leader who is widely recognized for his integrity, his compassion, and his ability to bring people together. Colonel Noble is the right leader for this agency at this moment in time. I'm confident that he is the leader that our hardworking state police and the people of Massachusetts deserve. And I'm now pleased to introduce Colonel Noble to say a few words. Good morning. Thank you, Governor Healy. I am incredibly honored and humbled to stand before all of you. I took the oath today a short while ago with a profound sense of responsibility and deep commitment to serving the Commonwealth and the Massachusetts State Police with the highest level of integrity, dedication, and professionalism. I want you to know that I come to this role with immense gratitude for the many people who have supported me throughout my professional journey with immense respect for the men and women who devote the, of the Massachusetts State Police who devote themselves every day to its mission, and with the immense focus on addressing the challenges of this moment. My three decades of law enforcement, from a summer police officer on Nantucket to the deputy superintendent of the New Jersey State Police, have prepared me for this role. First and foremost, I also want to thank my family for their support. 30 years in law enforcement is a long time, and it's not possible without a dedicated team who also believe in the mission of public service. My wife, my children, the Office of Public Safety and Security for your trust and faith in me. I will work tirelessly to live up to that trust. 
and ensure that the values and priorities of the Healy Driscoll administration are upheld in all that we do. I am eager to get to work and serve this great state to the best of my ability. To the women and men of the Massachusetts State Police, you are the backbone of this great organization and essential to everything we do moving forward. Every day, you put on the uniform aware that the challenges and dangers are great, but knowing that the reward of serving the people of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts is greater. I will support you in every way I can, ensuring you have the resources, the training, and the leadership needed to succeed in our mission. I also want to gratefully acknowledge the unwavering support of Colonel Jack Maughan in this transition, as well as his decades of service to not only this department, to our country as a United States Marine. Colonel Maughan is a gentleman whose personal care and concern for the women and men of this job in this state cannot be overstated. I admire his kindness, professionalism, and work ethic, and hope our members will continue to emulate those values in all that we do. To the many state and local officials, community leaders, and Massachusetts residents, I look forward to our partnership, collaboration. Public safety is not just about enforcing the law. That's only one small part. It's about building relationships, creating trust, earning, and most importantly, maintaining that trust, and working together towards a safer, more united community. I look forward to working alongside you as we shape the future of the Massachusetts State Police. As we look toward our future, I want to be clear. The Massachusetts State Police will deliver excellent police services, build and maintain public trust, and enforce the law with fairness, compassion, equity, transparency, and accountability. Trust between our department and the community must be strong and unwavering. But that accountability and that trust starts with me. I must first earn your trust. And I'm committed and have the resolve to do whatever that, to, to do whatever it takes to earn and maintain that trust. I'm confident that our department values will reflect those of the communities that we serve. Values of justice, respect, service. We will proactively address concerns and foster our relationship with the communities we serve every single day. Public safety is also about building partnerships with our stakeholders. I will approach my new role by listening and learning from the department and our many partners. Together we will develop strategies to enhance public safety, adopt innovations and meaningful reforms, and continuously build upon the relationships with our many stakeholders. As Colonel, the health and safety and well-being of our troopers will always be one of my top priorities. We will focus on the physical and mental health of our men and women of the State Police to include our outstanding civilian professional staff and support because I believe that a department is only as strong as its people. And that I will commit myself that you have the resources and tools necessary to carry out your duties effectively and with the respect that you deserve. As we move forward, we face many challenges, but we also have tremendous evolving needs of our Commonwealth, exceed societal expectations, and achieve our legislative mandates. I'm excited about the future, and we will build it together. I am committed to leading this department with integrity and to working tirelessly to ensure our department members, MSP staff, and our communities can be proud of the work that we do each and every day. Thank you to everyone here today for your support, your trust, and your belief and what we can achieve together. I look forward to this journey with all of you, and I am ready to get to work. Thank you. Thank you. We're happy to take any questions on topic. Well, this was the subject of an extensive search process um, that included a, a renowned panel on our search committee. Um, everything was reviewed, and we had the opportunity to review personally everything. And Lieutenant Governor and I are quite confident in Colonel Noble and the job that he will do. He has a terrific record of proven leadership, including at the New Jersey State Police. And I know that that will carry through here in Massachusetts.
What's the mandate you gave him? Well, um, the mandate, the responsibility, really, and I think those of us who serve and those of us who would accept an oath, as you just saw administered earlier, understand that our service is to our country, our service is to our state, our service is to our residents, the constituents that we serve. I think the charge of all who work in government and certainly at the state police is to make sure that we are putting our best foot forward every day to best serve and protect the well-being of our neighborhoods, of our communities, of our residents. You heard that pledge today from Colonel Noble. I know it is one shared across Massachusetts State Police. I think it's also appropriate to say that this is a large organization. Um, certainly, I have been around for a bit, um, both as head of the Civil Rights Division in the Attorney General's office and then for eight years as Attorney General and now um, as governor. And I know that with any large organization or agency, this is a moment of transition. This is an opportunity for us to make sure that we are supporting what is working and that leadership is empowered to further support what is working and to look hard with a fresh set of eyes at challenges before us and take whatever steps are necessary to address that. And I know that Colonel Noble brings that perspective and that attitude to this new appointment. We look forward to working with him. Colonel, this, is, this is a department in which there is ongoing scandal corruption. What are your priorities as a leader? What reforms do you want to put in place? What is the first few months look like? Can you know Sure. <clears throat> Absolutely. Thank you for the question. I think the, the most important uh, function for me right now is to be in listen mode and to extend myself proactively to go out and talk to the stakeholders and listen, not just to the folks that are going to tell me all the great things about the state police, which I have, which I have a great bank of knowledge for the great things. I've worked alongside the master of state police for many years, but also to listen to the concerns. And how will I address uh, the issues? Well, based on the responses and based on the, uh, on the issues that are raised, I will work collectively with the command staff, with the, with the staff from EOPS, and we will aggressively address the challenges that we see. Where there's things that we're doing great, we'll continue to do great, we'll build upon that and expand, and where there are areas where we can improve, we absolutely will. In law enforcement, after a long career, um, I approached personnel decisions, I approach the morale of an agency under one uh, driving belief that a healthy organization is one in which the men and women that serve in that department in any capacity feel that they belong, feel that they are supported, feel that they can come and work in an agency uh, regardless of their background, their experience, but once they become, a, in this case, a Massachusetts State Trooper, they've earned that right, that privilege, that honor, or a member of our civilian staff. And in doing so, uh, I will work tirelessly to ensure that we have a culture in the Massachusetts State Police that is built on equity and inclusion and respect for all and an opportunity for all and a, and a fair level playing ground to not only succeed and have the resources and the support, but to exceed professionally, to have professional development. Um, that is how I approach uh, the morale of, of in New Jersey as well as here in Massachusetts, and I will intend on working with the staff and uh, working tirelessly towards that. Uh, I am certainly uh, aware of it. I, that is going to be uh, a more deeper briefing will occur uh, in short order. So to answer your question, no, I have not received an official uh, briefing on that, but I will in very short order after this uh, event. As it relates to the, the academy, what's your first action? We, we absolutely are going to do a complete review. Uh, I will work together with the staff, with the command staff of the, New Jer of the Massachusetts State Police, of EOPS, of the Governor's Office, and what that review uh, looks like, we will come together. And we will be transparent about that, certainly. Last question. Uh, have you discussed any talk about across, across the Boston Health School with the delivery of new command staff? And is that going to filter down to the entire agency with the a new state police, new faces, new ways of doing things? Is everything different? Yeah, I, I, I do want to be clear that I, I come into this with an extraordinarily high level of confidence and respect for the women and men of the Massachusetts State Police. Again, I've worked alongside the men and women of Massachusetts State Police for many years, 
both on blue sky days uh, as well as days when we had to work together to collaborate on, on issues impacting public safety. Uh, I've come into this role with that profound level of respect. That said, I do look forward to meeting with the command staff and all the staff over the next several weeks and or months, and I look forward to building a, a command staff that, uh, that is prepared and equipped to carry out the, carry out the mission uh, that, that you heard earlier today. That's, that's easy for me, sir. I, I'm a career public servant. My heart is in the right place. I'm here for one reason and one reason only. I'm a career public servant. I'm honored to serve. I'm honored for this privilege. And that's the only reason that I'm here, because I believe I can serve in this in this uh, role. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I think what's important here is that I have long called for, and it is happening now, an investigation, and that, that is happening through the Attorney General's office. And then separately, one of the things I've asked Colonel Noble to do and to undertake is an independent review of academy policies and training. We want to make sure that we are doing things here in Massachusetts in the best possible way. And so, as I said earlier, as with any transition, and certainly um, on the heels of the horrific, horrific tragedy of the death of Enrique, the, that is appropriate to do, to make sure that that review is undertaken. And, you know, I'm confident that Colonel Noble will uh, do an excellent job in doing that, separate and apart from the investigation uh, done and being done by Attorney Meyer. Um, but, you know, I, look, as, as I speak on behalf of myself and the Lieutenant Governor, we are an administration that from the outset has been committed to diversity and inclusion. And I think you see that reflected in our administration. And I know that having um, reviewed Colonel Noble's history, his proven um, and extensive years of leadership and experience at the New Jersey State Police, he is going to be a colonel to uh, further and to reflect those values that are very important to us. And our mission is to make sure that he is empowered and the team is empowered to make changes that need to be made, evaluate where we are right now, and support the men and women of the state police with the resources and the training. You asked earlier about the focus, the charge, you know, making sure that people are receiving the right training, the right education, keeping up with best practices in an evolving and complicated area. When you think about the evolution of technology, you think about so many things that are making and contributing to the work of law enforcement being different than it was not just 30 years ago, five years ago. So that's the charge that Colonel Noble has, um, that, that I've given and that he is, is undertaking. And I'm quite, I mean, I'm confident and I trust um, in, his, in his leadership and what he will uh, do for the Massachusetts State Police. And we look forward to working with him. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. 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 Thank you.